Hey, welcome back. In this video, we are learning how to make vectors of vectors in C++. So it's a little bit similar to a 2D array, but instead of using arrays, we're using vectors. Um, now, I think by the end of this, what we want to do is we just want to make a little table of numbers, sort of like a matrix of numbers. Uh, and I'm going to say it's going to be a 3x3 three three matrix of numbers that we'll just print to the screen. So you'll be able to see how to populate the vector of vectors and then also how to print all of that stuff to the screen. All right. So it's going to be a lot of information to take in, but I think we can get it done in 10 minutes. So first of all, we need to define our vector of vectors. Uh, and what we would do, for example, if it was a vector of integers, we would go like this, and we would give it a name. You know, pick its val, pick its element type here, and name it. Now we don't want to make a vector of integers. We want to make a vector of vectors. So instead of writing int here, we're going to write vector. And I did mention that eventually we'll make a little table of numbers. So I guess those numbers can be inserted eventually as integers. So um, let's clean up these spaces here. I just separated it out so you can see. Um, now, if I have an older compiler, actually, so if I remove this final space, it's going to see these guys and think it's the insertion operator, and uh, that's not the case. Uh, so I have to leave a little space here, but if you have a newer compiler, I actually I don't think this is a problem anymore for newer compilers. But anyways, watch out. If you're on an older compiler, leave a space there. So let's talk about this for a quick second. I just defined a vector of vectors called stuff. So this is my vector. It's called stuff, and its elements are the t are a vector of integers. Notice I didn't put it. I didn't name this vector of integers here. Uh, that's because I'm not actually defining it. I'm just saying that for this vector called stuff, instead of its element type being integer or double or something or string, its integer type is vector. It's basically just going to accept vectors filled with integers, sort of as its argument. So there we go. Now I say here, we're going to fill the inner vector and then insert it into the outer vector. So basically we need to create a vector here. We do need to define a vector eventually, the, a vector of integers, and we need to fill that. We need to populate it with elements. And then once we have some elements in there, then we're going to, we would use pushback to do that. Uh, then we'll use a separate pushback function to actually take that vector that we've created and drop it in as the first element of stuff. And it's okay that that element is a vector because that's what it has to be. Okay, so first of all, we're going to use nested for loops to do this. So I'll just set this up first of all, and we can talk about it. Okay, so for int i equals zero, and then um, i less than three, I mentioned we're going to sort of you know make a, a three by three little matrix so that'll work for us, and we'll go i plus plus. Okay, so inside this vector, uh, and sorry, inside this for loop, what we should do is we should define our temporary vector, this inner vector that we're going to be sort of passing in this argument, sort of that we're passing into stuff. So uh, we'll say f vector int, and it's a temporary vector. Let's just call it temp. All right. Uh, so what we're actually doing here, this for loop that runs three times, eventually we'll use this for loop to pass in this vector three times, and you'll see that in one second. Um, I guess eventually, what, here I can just write it down here. We'll have stuff dot push uh, push back. No stuff dot push back. Push. <clears throat> back uh, temp. So eventually we're going to just pass temp into stuff as in, we're passing an entire vector in, but we need to fill out that vector first of all before this makes any sense. So we'll use another for loop here. So for int j equals zero, um, j less than three. Again, this is just to get us a, a for a three by three little matrix guy, uh, and then j plus plus. So inside this for loop, what we want to do is we want to use pushback uh, to fill out, sort of to, to create elements in temp and put values there. So temp dot push bush temp dot push back. Uh, and for now, let's just drop in the original index value here i. So it'll actually just fill. So it'll it, so when we create our first element in temp, it will be it will it'll actually the first element will be a zero. And then when we run this loop again, the first element will still be zero because i hasn't changed. And the third element will still be zero because i still hasn't changed, j is changing. Uh, so this will actually, here, where the first iteration of the program will actually create an integer, a vector of integers called temp, uh, and it'll have three zeros for, you know, each value will be a zero. And then what we do is that once it kicks us out of that loop after j, after this isn't satisfied anymore, um, 
then we're going to use pushback, but we're going to use it on stuff. And stuff here is our sort of parent vector, this outside vector of vectors. And right now where we, where we defined it, it had no size. But here when we use pushback, uh, we're actually creating the first element in stuff. And then we're passing in, uh, we're passing in temp here. And temp is a vector of integers and it already has three values in it. So there we go. The second time, so and that, that takes us here to the end of our loop. Now when we run this loop again, and I will increment to one, and we'll do everything again. We'll create, we'll sort of recreate temp here, and then I will be one, so we'll actually, we'll fill temp with three ones, and then once it kicks us out of the loop, then we'll, we'll use pushback on stuff again. Stuff is our sort of parent vector and it'll actually create the second element of stuff, and the second element will get passed in the value there, or it'll pass in like a vector, because it's passing in temp, and this time it's passing in a vector of integers, and each of those integers has a value of one. The third time we run this, it'll pass in, basically at the end of the day, a vector with three twos in it. So there you go. Now, if we actually just ran this program right now, it would work properly, but we wouldn't see anything. So we do need to see out some stuff to us to know that we've done this correctly. So we're going to use again two sort of a nested for loop. So we'll go for int i equals zero. Um, I so I could say here less than three, but something that's actually going to be way more uh, way better for us to use is we'll go stuff dot size. Because if I for run some you know if I if I later on if I change this to a five or something, I would have to remember to change this to a five. But this way it'll already know. So this this kind of protects us against that. All right, so I++. Now inside here, I mentioned it's going to be a nested for loop, so we'll just drop this in right away. Uh, so for int j equals zero. And now this one's a little bit more interesting. So again, we could say j less than three, but that doesn't protect us against much. So instead here, we'll say stuff. We'll actually go one step further. We'll use, we'll find this index sort of value here and dot size and like that. So basically what this is doing, this is checking uh, this is checking the the length of the row that we've put in here. Um, so you'll see that uh, I'll change these. I'll reward on the program, make it three by three, and we'll run this afterwards, and you'll see how these update. Uh, but this again, this protects us against uh, changing the values in here that we're actually inputting. Okay, so then we got to go with J plus plus, and we're almost there. So C out. We want to print this all to the screen, so we're going to say C out stuff and similar to the 2d array we're going to call two index values here just like that ij and then uh, maybe to make this look nice outside of this loop but inside of this loop we're going to put here see so, you know, just an and line and that way we're going to print just you know three times uh, uh, three values at a time basically okay so i think we got there that's about eight minutes in looks like we're missing some semicolons all right my bad. Let's see, I think we can finish this off in 10 minutes. Uh, all right, so we'll go and run this program. So look at that. That's pretty cool. When we build and run this, we're actually seeing 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2. So if you were following along with what I was saying, uh, this is what we were expecting. Now, what if we change these values here? So let's change this to like a 5. Let's change this to a 9. So if we go build and run that, let's see what happens. So instead, now look at this, we have one, two, three, four, five rows. And if you count this across, we actually have nine elements in each row. So there you go. It's actually, uh, well, I don't think I have time to completely trace through all this code about why it's working, actually why it's inserting properly, and also why it's printing to the screen properly. But you can clearly see, you know, if we make this, um, Let's, like, let's make this 2 and let's make this you know, 25 or something just to kind of accentuate it. So there we go. It's actually, there's one, two rows now and uh, 25 elements across. Okay, so there you go. I think we're out of time now. Um, but maybe join me in the next video and uh, we'll talk about this using diagrams sort of and we'll actually trace exactly what's getting created when and where and I think that should really clear things up but otherwise if you are just looking for the code to uh, to know how this works then uh, then here it is and uh, you should be good to go all right see you guys in the next video and we'll talk more about this